All right, let's say that we have the function f of x, and it's equal to 2x plus 5 over 4 minus 3x. And what we want to do is figure out what is the inverse of our function. Pause this video and try to figure that out before we work on that together. All right, now let's work on it together. And just as a reminder of what a function and an inverse even does, if this is the domain of a function, and that's the set of all values that you could input into the function for x and get a valid output. And so let's say you have an x here, it's a member of the domain. And if I were to apply the function to it, if I were to input that x into that function, then the function is going to output a value in the range of the function, and we call that value f of x. Now an inverse, that goes the other way. If you were to input the f of x value into the function, that's going to take us back to x. So that's exactly what, what f inverse does. Now how do we actually figure out the inverse of a function, especially a function that's defined with a rational expression like this? Well, the way that I think about it is, let's say that y is equal to our function of x, or y is a function of x. So we could say that y is equal to 2x plus 5 over 4 minus 3x. For our inverse, the relationship between x and y is going to be swapped. And so in our inverse, it's going to be true that x is going to be equal to 2y plus 5 over 4 minus 3y. And then to be able to express this as a function of x, to say that what is y is a function of x for our inverse, we now have to solve for y. So it's just a little bit of algebra here. So let's see if we can do that. So the first thing that I would do is multiply both sides of this equation by four minus three y. If we do that, on the left-hand side, we are going to get x times each of these terms. So we're going to get four x minus three y x. And then that's going to be equal to, on the right-hand side, since we multiplied by the denominator here, we're just going to be left with the numerator. It's going to be equal to two y plus five. And this could be a little bit intimidating because we're seeing an x's and y's, what are we trying to do? Remember, we're trying to solve for y. So let's gather all the y terms on one side and all the non-y terms on the other side. So let's get rid of this two y here. Actually, so, well I could go either way. Let's get rid of this two y here. So let's subtract two y from both sides. And let's get rid of this four x from the left-hand side. So let's subtract four x from both sides. And then what are we going to be left with? On the left-hand side, we're left with minus or negative five, or actually it would be this way. It would be negative three yx minus two y, and you might say, hey, where is this going? But I'll show you in a second, is equal to, those cancel out, and we're going to have five minus four x. Now once again, we are trying to solve for y. So let's factor out a y here, and then we are going to have y times negative three x minus two is equal to five minus four x. And now this is the home stretch. We can just divide both sides of this equation by negative three x minus two, and we're going to get y is equal to five minus four x over negative three x minus two. Now another way that you could express this is you could multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a negative one, that won't change the value. And then you would get, you would get in the numerator a four x minus five, and in the denominator you would get a three x plus two. So there you have it. Our f inverse as a function of x, which we could say is equal to this y, is equal to this right over there.